So our next group is um, a Manor research group doing the Tesla turbine power unit. It does not rotate itself. It's just uh, sort of 
uh, put in place by these two end caps here. Now the turbine system, this is the nozzle that we, we was talking about. Here, from the combustor, uh, the flue gas enters these ports right here and, and uh, directs the flue gas in between the turbine discs. So here's a sort of rendering of how it'd be situated. Notice, but don't notice that the, uh, the nozzle is quite different than the actual result that we went with. And now we're gonna talk about the electrical system. So, to start uh, rotation on the master shaft, we need to have a motor which acts like the starter of your car. And once we've achieved stable fuel ignition and combustion, we can switch the motor generator into generation <coughs> mode and store power due to regenerative braking. So to do this, we would need a DC brushless motor controlled by an electric speed controller. And we're expecting an output of 10,000 RPMs and 100 watt capacity, which is about enough to light a light bulb. And, okay, so this is an overview of the electrical subsystem itself. So on your left is the turbine output coupled to the generator, which is controlled by the EC and a switch that lets you go from battery to start and to storage mode, which is the green light generated section. So to start it, we use a 6S light bulb battery, which is similar to what you would find in a model airplane, and a 100 act fuse for protection. It's for a safety purpose. So we went over some manufacturing, which we did in Holmes Hall in the machining lab. That's Jamar, he's actually a machinist by trade, so we used mill and lathe to custom fabricate all of our parts here. So here's every, um, an extended view of every component. Um, the electrical subsystem is right here, here's the motor. Here's the master shaft with all of the discs on it. Here is the casing, and this is the fuel delivery system. Everything is going to be this and a little sandwich in the uh, casing. So to finalize the project, we did testing. So the purpose of this test was to see if it, if uh, the fuel is nice with my ignition system and see observe any constant combustion or or, or not not there. The result is well, it did ignite, so it, uh, ignition system did work. Um, it was able to sustain uh, continuous combustion without forced airflow. However, the the manifold that I used. Uh, it seems not to be distributing the fuel evenly, so we might have to uh, go ahead and change change that. And this, the electrical subsystem was satisfactory. It was um, controlled like a model airplane, so we can adjust the speed of the starting shaft. But we actually didn't get to um, test the generation mode because it was unsafe to run. Any <laughs> Because uh, on the, when you work at the turbine, you need to have perfect alignment, and we made all of our our um, components on old mills and lathes, so they're not exactly perfect, which is what you need in a turbine. So we got uh, the electrical subsystem work, we got the combustion system to work, but we actually didn't see the combustor work for generation. So in all the logistics of the project, um, what we did was come up with a budget. And with this budget, we created proposals to apply for grants um, that was provided by the university. So here's the rest of the budgets. And we had to also provide a schedule of our overall project, which took place on <coughs> from fall to the spring semester. And 
And so with uh, this whole project, we were able to achieve fabricating the entire unit and all the parts were custom made. We assembled the overall system ready for testing, which we tested um, each individual subsystem, but now we just have to test it all together. And the conclusions from this is that the planning and designing was more strenuous because of all the different equations and all the different constraints that we had than the actual fabrication of the project. So some acknowledgments. Um, throughout this whole project, we want to thank the University of Hawaii at Manoa uh, Mechanical Engineering Department, Dr. Nishad, Dr. Chow for helping with the combustor system, um, Dr. Bingham, the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program who helped fund our project, um, Native Hawaiian Science and Engineering Mentorship Program who also greatly funded our project and helped us out, and then EE students, Andy Morshita and Nick Fisher for helping out with the electrical subsystem. Okay, so in summary, we went over our project, the different <coughs> subsystems, the assembly, budget, conclusions, and the projects. Any questions?
rear, which are the type of designs you'll see on real race vehicles and trophy trucks. And we also did FDA analysis um, for many different types of loading so that we were sure that our vehicle would not be destroyed during the race. And you can see we also did some in-house fabrication for suspension. Uh, we used the jig to ensure precise fitment um, because suspension geometry is very tight. And with the help of our friends at PMT and a couple grad students, uh, we managed to assemble the majority of it on island. You can, you can see us there welding and uh, finalizing the majority of the primary components. And that is what the final product looks like. <coughs> and then this is us on the mainland in Washington and in Oregon. Uh, you can see we're doing some on-site uh, field modifications, some tuning, uh, as well as the rigorous test inspection, <coughs> the tech inspection, which many teams will not pass on the first try. We had to modify our vehicle a little bit in order to pass that, which you'll see in our short video after this. And you can also see our uh, transportation. Uh, many teams had U-Hauls and big rigs. We had a rental pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see uh, the car covered in mud. It was very rainy, very cold. Uh, it even hailed at one point. Uh, many of the cars turn brown after the first stop of the race, so you can identify them. You can also see our car on the rock crawl. And then we have a short video to show you. challenging seasons for the Manoa SAE Baja team. The 2011 Baja did not make it to competition, which meant that this year, the team had even more pressure on them to succeed. From day one, the team faced challenges, starting with a small but capable team. They spent the first semester designing and engineering their Baja. This included test driving the successful 2010 Baja, and spending countless hours digitally building the new design themselves. But not even that challenge can stop them. Once the design was completed, the team began fabricating their Baja. This meant getting their hands dirty, cutting the molly, bending, welding, and fabricating all the pieces needed to create a complete race training Baja. With the competition dates moving ever closer and closer to the horizon, the team rushed to pack their creation from the crates and ship it off to Washington.
They then spend several days and freezing nights finishing their Baja in the garage of Lance Kimura's house in Washington, the team captain of the 2010 Baja. They then drove four hours south to the competition race grounds. Then the ever deadly tech inspection. Tech inspection is never easy and the team would shed blood, sweat, and tears to pass this crucible. After their first unsuccessful pass, the team worked swiftly and deliberately through the night to ensure that their Baja was ready to compete. This included welding additional frame members and dealing with the undocumented last minute rule changes. The team persevered and survived so that they can compete in the dynamic events. As this video plays before you, the team is currently battling their hearts out and racing wheel to wheel with the best universities in the world. This Baja is the best Manoa has produced and will even spark in the competition standings. The other schools will learn as they see the bright light of the UHM Baja fade to the dust trail in front of them. That Manoa is forced to be reckoned with in academia and out on the track. some way to um, use renewable energy or excuse me, find some way to reduce this oil dependency so our team and uh, our team we decided to look into um, super mileage which is a competition that uh, uh, looks into uh, different options of fuel efficiency so we have um, super mileage we're gonna go over the layout and the design and implementation real quick and then the conclusion so what we are um, the curriculum for mechanical engineers, as far as uh, seniors in order to graduate, we have to participate in a, a project. So we have, uh, so we chose this project, the super mileage project. 
and we des design and construct a single person vehicle, uh, lightweight, and it's fuel efficient. Alright, this is our basic layout with the subsystems. We got the uh, brakes, steering, engine, drivetrain, body and frame, and axle and spindles. It's a teardrop shape for aerodynamics. This is our total mass budget, approximately 328 pounds. Um, including driver, body, engine, and drivetrain. And these are our driving strategies that we uh, analyze. There's four different ones. Um, out of the top two, we decided to go with option one, which is the blue one. It's a burn and cool strategy. What we do is we uh, accelerate to uh, about 30 miles per hour, then cut the engine and coast, and then re uh, restart the engine and accelerate again. So in order to use our vertical strategy, we needed to implement an electric starter so that the driver can start the engine up after coasting. Uh, this picture shown here is the uh, electric starter motor that eventually turns the motor and the driver can, so the driver can uh, restart the motor. For our fuel delivery, instead of going with the stock carburetor like the 2011 super mileage team, we uh, designed it to use an electronic port fuel injection. With this electronic port fuel injection system, uh, we use pressurized fuel to, to get good atomization. This fuel is then injected at the end of the intake runner for the intake port. And with this, we can assume to get about 30% better fuel economy over the carburetion. So for the cooling system, last year they used a naturally aspirated system that's just an air cooled system that has just fins around the cylinder which dissipate the heat. But with our engine being within the shell and the body of our vehicle, we chose to design a liquid cooled bore which can dissipate uh, more heat. So it's just similar, this is a four cylinder uh, example. Uh, fluid just circulates, the antifreeze circulates through pipes and passageways of the engine and in order to dissipate the heat needed uh, to produce or to increase the efficiency. So the engine modifications that we did was we need to uh, machine the original cylinder of the, uh, the stock racing Stratton engine that everyone received for the competition in order to incorporate the new board kit that we purchased. Uh, a connecting rod needed to be made as well as, uh, as, well as a crankcase spacer and a uh, journal bearing as well. This is our steering system. Last year they had a linkage only setup. We just uh, modified it, made it better. We added a uh, support. Right under the steering column, as you can see, like a little V bracket or upside down V bracket. Um, and we also implemented a new brake system. Instead of scrub brakes, we did uh, disc brakes. There are cable disc brakes, they're not the hydraulic ones, but they suited our system. Yeah, so, in conclusion, pretty much um, we used last year's the shell and body, and um, pretty it's cool because all the all the modifications that we did are, you know, they're hidden. So, um, which include the starter, the fuel injection system, the cooling, and just all the modifications we went through. And um, I think one le um, one thing that we learned a lot is that uh, research is always continuous and never ends with the project. So, uh, like, it's cool to see like uh, the electric, the electrical vehicle, like the turbines. You know, we're we're really looking into renewable energy. So, um, with that. Uh, I just like to thank um, SAE and then uh, Dr. Najad, thank you, uh, UH and NHM and boy, we couldn't have um, gone as far as we got to without you guys. So. The electric starter is it regenerative powered, or are you guys throw another battery in there? Oh, we have a battery already. Okay, so we'd like to thank, to thank all the students and the faculty and various people who made it out today. Lunch is ready for everyone, but right before we go to lunch, can we have all the students meet outside to take our group picture? Um, and then after lunch, we will have a panel to discuss young engineering professions. Um, if you're not staying for our guest speaker panel afterwards, please 
please, please, please fill out our evaluation form because it's important so we can do this again in the future. And drop off your badges in the box that's located outside on the table. So, are we going to Discovery and search for knowledge. Um, I ask you to bless our food and nourish and strengthen our bodies um, and protect our soft for um, our um, and our and our people. Thank you.